Okay, we are here. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. It is the beginning of the month of, the month of uh, February 2016. And I would like to um, say uh, I would like to wish a happy birthday to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Happy birthday, Miho. And uh, may you have a very pleasant birthday. I know today is not technically your birthday, but your birthday is the beginning of February. Uh, also, uh, I believe my co-host here, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, had a birthday. Is that true? Yes, but we don't count them. We don't believe in birthdays. Well, I don't. I don't count them either because, you know, when you reach a certain age, they're not. It's not something you look forward to. Let's put it that you way. What the Bible said about birthdays? Oh, here we go. Only Herod and the Pharaoh care about such things. It's oh. I, I, me, me. Why would anybody want <clears throat> to celebrate a year closer to death? When you think about it, I just a birthday is a year closer to, de to your demise. That's correct. But it's an I, I, me, me. Give well, me a present. Give I me am present. the... You could do whatever you want. You're an individual. But I know I am the proven king of progressive internet talk radio, high exalted, mystic, imperial, grand what wizard the hell of does progressive. That have to go with birthdays? Hey, listen, I respect the guy. He's a fellow progressive warrior. The more the merrier in your in your army uh, of progressives, the better. But Sank. He doesn't exactly, you know, <laughs> Sank is Sank. You know, we're talking about Young Turks. Sank is Sank. Um, you know, he's nowhere near as a Gary No. Even though Gary No pissed me off a couple times for personal reasons. We're doing work. You know what I mean? Like, like Gary No, he just goes on and on with deep, true facts in his arsenal thank you very much Bernard, for shutting down you know it's like he, he's totally amazing his intellect his facts and but you know look not everybody could be a gary no but look with us we give you facts uh we debate things we also have a, a great poisonality and a sense of humor but anyway what does that have to do with birthdays Birthdays are, uh, you, you know, you you know what the problem is. You could be a tad bit negative sometimes. You don't know how to enjoy I'm life. Always negative. You don't know how to enjoy life and lighten up, brother. Can you lighten up and enjoy life a little bit? No. Not in that that way. Okay. All right. I know he loves chess, by the way. The Reverend Doctor William J. Eisman loves to play chess, uh, but thought. he is into this. These tournament rules where they have a clock and they time you, you know, pressure, pressure. But all right, and and he and we were debating about the standard color of the of the chessboard, uh, which according to him is medium brown and light brown. But I I like black and red. I my favorite color is red. The operative word there. I. Well, you, then you have standard. you have no interest in things that are pleasing to the eye, aesthetics. What did I just say? How do you like your women? Which do you like nothing. Walmart women or do you like swimsuit models? It's the same thing. It doesn't matter to me. Aesthetics. It doesn't matter to me. It's a if it's a woman that happens to be uh, you know uh, I like I like. She could be blonde. She could be black. She could. Is there an ideal? Absolutely, but that has nothing to do with reality. 
Do you see the uh, the body types that uh, Mr. Mario Petrus uh, put up? They no, it. all I saw was his food. No, no, he, he put up a banner of all the different uh, female body types that exist. Did not see it. And the names of them. And, and the one he picked is the one I picked, Curvy. I mean, you had skinny. Curvy, too. Baby. You had skinny, you know, which is like olive oil's body, you know, uh, flat ass, flat, no, no breasts, and just scrawny. Then you had different body types. And uh, uh, according to the uh, what ethnic group you come from, because of their culture, some cultures like a very large uh, bottom, which is mostly, to me, fat and cellulite. I like the athletic, well-conditioned, muscular, round bottom that's solid. How many people ever get to indulge in their ideal? African-American men like the big bottom, even though it has cellulite in there and fat. Latinos yeah. like uh, Latinos like in, like in Mexico, like uh, Mexico. their men uh, to be uh, uh, chunky and hefty. Fire hydrants. Yeah, chunky and hefty. A little uh, a little gorda, a little gorda. Um, uh, you know these these are you know cultural these things preferences. Are all can be thrown out the window when they deal with individuals. Well, then you yeah. have individual tastes. Well, you're just doing the ideal here. Like the ideal. But we not all can. We are not all end up with our yeah. ideals. But there, I see people that fit the description that are not models and that are not Playboy playmates of the year, that mm -hmm. are have chose not to get into the industry that have the look, you know, the woman with the full lips and the and the long the curly hair and the curves and this and that and they. They just chose not to get involved in the industry because, just like government and just like corporate America, these industries can be very sleazy and underhanded. And uh, uh, usually, like Hollywood entertainment industry, you know, uh, office politics, play usually, a favoritism, you know, office politics. Usually, they don't find these things out until later. They don't know these things when they enter into. These are things you find out when you have a little experience at some point. Yeah, like beauty pageants can be rigged. Uh -huh. uh, pro wrestling too. They play. Uh -huh. The promoter plays favorites. Whoever is has crawled up his ass the farthest, uh, they push him or her. You know, uh, favors. Uh, casting couch. And, in other words, unfair, dishonest practices in in our capitalist system. It's our, called in, corruption. The in, devil's world. In, in crony capitalism. Uh, no surprise and, here. And all the shenanigans we're mentioning mm -hmm. in different walks of life in under this system mm -hmm. is leading up to the, the to the most recent democratic debate. Um, it was obvious to me that Hillary Clinton appeared to be more on the defensive than even the last previous Democratic debate. What do you expect the corporatists to be? She's raising her voice Against more. Against Bernie Sanders. She's yelling. She's shaking her head. She's going on the defensive. Defending her taking $600,000 from all, uh, from uh, the, the gold, uh, Goldman Sachs. Oh, did you see the other? For bit, speaking to them. Did you see the other bit of information about uh, taking a half a million dollars worth of jewelry from the king of Saudi Arabia, the prince or something? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. gifts. She yeah. receives lots of gifts of very high value. It's not supposed to. Government uh, giving gifts to the government, the people, is not supposed to be. Now she. Um, she obviously, towards the end of the debate, gave big kudos to uh, the uh, Zionist scumbag, uh, Dr. Henry Kissinger. Um, I didn't see that. Yeah, if you watch, I posted the debate from YouTube in its entirety. Well, I watched and towards the end, she bragged about being supported by Henry Kissinger. It's there. 
An endorsement? Uh, yes, Henry Kissinger is very fond of Hillary Clinton, yes. Okay. And Henry Kissinger... But he's nothing but a warmonger. Yeah, sure. Well, so, you know, I would be proud of that. I don't think so. Well, hey, I'm not Hillary. She's the one that's throwing out all these accolades and, you know, being proud of it. She, she also, um, I mean, how can you, how can you be so much for the main street, mainstream America, the middle class and the poor, if you are, you are against um, free education and free health care, single payer, universal health care, a free college, you're against these things. You're against br uh, really breaking up the big banks and throwing the ones that deserve to be in prison, in prison. Mm -hmm. she, you're against that. Because you get money from that. You, uh, um, you, you make a statement, Hillary made a statement that the massive uh, campaign contributions that she, she receives has no effect on her political decisions. Yeah. She does what she wants. Bingo. So... And anybody who knows me knows that. So, all these, um, um, uh, online internet articles that claim Hillary Clinton was lying profusely. Oh, yes, yeah, she was. It, it's true. And, and another article says, guess what, Hillary? You are the establishment. Bingo. And she says she's not. What did she tell Bernie Sanders? Uh, how dare you? Yeah, the whole thing was, how dare you accuse me of being an establishment? Uh, smearing uh, me. Smearing, smearing me. me. Well, can with you... this uh, center, Mo uh, a moderate, I'm a progressive. Well, can you prove Bernie Sanders wrong during this debate? No, you didn't. Have you proved him wrong yet? No. no um, can you? you know? How can you? Right, exactly. Now, Bernie Sanders, as he was being yelled at and scolded, did not. Buckheads, maybe he doesn't have the energy because he's 74 years old. I would have rose, raised my voice and I would have pointed my finger in her face and I would have exposed the real Hillary Clinton on national television. That wouldn't have done it. And, and just like policy, just like Obama holds back with the shenanigans, the true shenanigans of the Republican Congress. You know, he, he's... Well, look, let's understand something, please. We have a government that has three branches. Right. The House. Right. The Senate. The President. Yep. And then if you get in trouble with that stuff, then you end up with the, 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 the Supreme Court. Oh, gosh. But, oh, gosh. Okay. But... If these three do not work together, nothing gets done. I'm, uh, but Ever. I, I'm sorry, but a bipartisanship compromise means the people always end up losing. Exactly. But there's a reason why that is. And it's called corruption. There's a, there's a, uh, I believe she's in the house, I'm not sure. Uh, she wants as I want, oh, the, any, uh, any intelligent The African-American uh, woman. The who wants every bill to be one subject so that you cannot put in these stupid pork barrel crap. With last minute decisions. Amendments, middle of the night, crap all that to get them passed. So she, uh, yeah, so she is uh, fighting to have one bill tackled at a time yeah one, one bill, subject one subject matter at a time yeah. you solve it you vote blah 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 you go on to the next right. you do the same with that you go on to the next but that's why we end up with all these stupid laws and bills that end up doing not the job like uh, hillary is praising dodd frank that dodd frank 
it, it is going to help us stop the banks from doing it again to us. It ain't going to happen because you know what? Yeah. They cut the balls off of Dodd Frank as they did with the uh, 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 getting Elizabeth Warren not to have the the, uh, the, the, the program to deal with the banks and the finances and etc. You notice when they asked each one, what's the very first thing you would do as president? Uh, and Bernie says, get the money out of politics. Same thing I'm o trying to do now. Overturn yeah. um, the Citizens United and bring back Glass Steagall, where it rightfully belongs, and but that's the first thing he said, because he says, "What is the point? Everything else will fail if well, they'll do if it to the, us again. If money, if people are still being paid off, nothing will get done. In other words, everything. In order to get positive things happening, you have to get that." the corruption, the money, out of politics. Yeah, you have to clean house first. You clean it, like Iceland clean did. Clean. Uh, cleanse the system. And um, The Republicans own the House. Yeah. They own the Senate. You can't get 60 to override any anything. So yeah. nothing can get done. I mean, for now, yeah. Nothing can get done. For now. Now, um, uh, Bernie Sanders is absolutely right. When uh, the voter turnout overall is high Democrats win and a lot of people register to vote and actually go vote Democrats always win that's correct when voter turnout is low and and you have an and you let Republicans get away with all this voter suppression and gerrymandering at, right and and all this underhandedness yeah. uh, that uh, Hillary is being investigated uh, by the way with the Iowa caucuses uh, they're really being embarrassed into continuing the count, and I think it should be counted. You know, you got a, a, a you have to have a fair playing field. Hey, you have uh, officials uh, uh, um, making decisions in a football game. You have umpires in a baseball game. You know what I mean? Well, same thing with elections. I mean. Um, Hey, yeah, but if you're a Republican, what you do is you bring in the you bring in the Supreme Court, and then they vote for you. Well, Republicans have to cheat, okay, to yeah. win. Yes, they have no facts on their side. Well, you know, how many debates have they had so far? And in name me one thing besides getting rid of Obamacare. Any one of them has said that they will do when they get in office. Well. They always say uh, what they really want to do is they want to cut basically all the social programs that the little guy depends on, and they also talk about yeah. talk about war. Uh, Obama has cut the military down. Uh, it's pathetic. We need to build up the military, and then they talk about when they talk about immigration, 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 immigration. Yeah, I sound like Popeye. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Im immigration. Immigration. Ah, immigration. No, when they talk about immigration, it's always this paranoia about people from south of the border with yeah, brown yeah. skin and Muslims. Yeah. And Muslims, yeah. you know, uh, it, it, it's always about attacking somebody or, um, or deporting somebody or arresting somebody, you know, I guess filling up all those privatized prisons uh, for free slave labor. Uh, but it's never, it, it's nothing about green energy, nothing about getting rid of corruption in government, nothing about um, uh, helping the uh, all the homeless veterans, which is despicable, and uh, the, uh, so on and so forth. You know, helping the homeless in general, helping the poor in general, uh, the unemployed middle class, no talk of that. They all bitch about that 1-2% social programs that we spend, but the 57% of the budget spent on the military, etc., they say nothing about it. They say nothing? Not a word! Now, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh, I want to uh, uh, first induct oh. um, 
I mean, let's see. First, uh, the uh, the extremely rotund and bloated governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, for wanting to privatize the water uh, uh, supply company in New Jersey, privatize water. Okay, and I want to also induct the governor of Michigan oh, for exactly. stating that he want that he's willing to give the people of Michigan a 30% discount on their water bill. Wow, you're going to discount poison. He should be inducted into prison. As right. Michael Moore has said. Right. Wow. Real sport. Give them a 30% discount yeah. for poisoning themselves and their children. You know that there they, are poor They shouldn't people. have to pay for, for poison, by oh, the way. Of course not. But poor people, you know, they like it. Someone put up on Facebook the other day uh, when someone else was discussing the things that Bernie Sanders wants to do. And the gentleman said, Oh, well, yeah, but these things cost money, uh, tax and Yeah, tax the rich. <laughs> it's that simple. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, that's what happens in Norway. Doesn't that's the, what happens in Sweden? Hey, doesn't the bloated doesn't the bloated military cost money? I just said fifty-seven percent of the budget. When you figured it all up, compared to one to two percent of the budget. Hey, Bernie, for the social program. Bernie Sanders is actually going easy on the rich. Yes, because he, he's not he's not mentioning the uh, Dwight uh, D Eisenhower uh, a ninety one percent tax rate on the rich, which we should have. This way, the middle class will pay less, a lot less money. Well, in yeah, taxes. that's what <laughs> revenue, as Dwight Eisenhower knew, you get from taxes. Okay, and when you tax people. You have to tax people, as our uh, 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 tax amendment says to the Constitution, those with the money. Now, Hillary Clinton did mention cutting unnecessary government programs, but she didn't, she didn't say anything about taxing the rich. Well, wait a minute. You know what programs they are? What? The social ones. Oh, those are the unnecessary yes, ones? Yes, exactly. Listen, you... you exactly. Keep, you, I'm going to try to keep my composure. You uh, uh, um, uh, um, devoted uh, true blue Democrats out there that like blue dogs. that like Hillary Clinton. They're all blue dogs, including the feminists that that are desperate to get that first woman president in the White House. Listen, she a vote for Hillary Clinton is a vote for the private sector and the top one percent. It is not a vote for the little guy, for the poor, for the middle class. I feel you. Don't you pain. understand this? She she says a lot of things in the debate, but just notice, you know, she talks a hell of a lot about her record as yeah. Secretary of State, which happens to be not so uh, worthy of, of boasting. You know what I mean? She's bragging about experience. Foreign policy. Experience. I know how to get things done. I don't talk about ideals and things that cannot be done. I talk about things that I can get done. Those words you said right before, things that cannot be done or will not be done. That's right. Will they not allow be. to yeah, be done. That's right. It's not that they cannot be done. That's right. It's that Hillary and as the Republicans will not do them. As we were saying with the tax system and the, and, 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 and the universal care, and etc. All the other industrialized countries do it. Don't they? All Scandinavian countries, including Iceland, have been just fine and dandy for a long time you know with, how, de with democratic socialism. You know how long Germany has had universal health care? How long? 1941. Then what is it with the the assholes in the Republican debate that keep on demonizing Sweden and socialized med and social uh, social uh, uh, democratic socialism and single payer health care and blah 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 blah? 
What is so uh, um, great about keeping health care and everything privatized? It's well, very simple. I think I know what you're going to say. It's very simple. That prevents the rich from paying more taxes. It's very simple. They're that greedy. Yeah. Of course they're that greedy. You're a multi-billionaire. And they'll find Shame any explanation you. for that. Shame on you, multi-billionaires you know? that don't have enough money. Yeah. That's what it's all about. You're f Steve, Steve, Steve the black and white cat, the neurotic black... Like, you're a fucking pain in the ass. You know what? You, you belong in a Chinese takeout. Right. I like the new setup with the flags. They don't really get messed up that much. Really, they're fine. Yeah, well, almost <laughs> ninety-eight percent fine, thanks to the friggin' neurotic, who would, who would make excellent chicken chow meow, oh, God. chicken chow meow. So my show would go p perfectly, and that, instead of these disruptions. All right, let us. Oh. People like these disruptions. No, they don't. Yes, they do. It makes the maybe, show may, human. Maybe the common folk and that live out in the rural Babel Belt no, red states. They like, can't dig the content. They're not watching. No, you need. And I'm glad. You, you need the. Um, you need the eight cartons in the back, like K O R N T V from Hee Haw, with Buck Owens and Roy Clark. I used to watch it actually. If uh, it if it pertained to uh, singing country music, and yeah, e yeah. And evangelical but crap. Otherwise, you have a background which pertains to what you're doing. Oh, speaking of, uh, I'm going to mention it. <laughs> everything we discuss politically is part of our series Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch soaking that conch energy. Let me see if I got any messages. Um, yeah, I know. I know Sarah Palin and uh, and Michelle Bachman are irrelevant. I know they're irrelevant, uh, but uh, for some reason, people care what they think. Uh, I know. Uh, oh, don't forget <coughs> to tell Reverend Bill what. Oh, oh yeah, Ted Cruz is crazy. Ted Cruz is crazy. Pastor father. And the stupid statements he's been making lately. God told him to run. I think Michelle Bachman said that. I think that Huckabee said that. I think Santorum said that. Oh, he's nuts, man. I think nuts, they all man. say that. God, oh, Bush told, God told Bush to go into Iraq. God told them to, uh, he basically, they want to stone all gay people to death. Yeah. If they can get away with it, you know. And Jesus didn't say that, did he? Uh, the judge in uh, in Texas says I I publicly refuse to marry gay couples. Mm -hmm. He made well, he that. He can do that. He can do that. Who cares? They'll just go somewhere else to get married. Exactly. There's no uh, if a person has a problem with something uh, that is part of his job or something, quit the job. Yeah. Go like, elsewhere. Like like Kim Davis. You don't like it, quit. Good. Bye. Instead of And don't let the door hit you in that fat ass on the way out. Now what did you say that you said to me Wednesday? They think God is so weak. Yes, they have to do his work for him. That these evangelical the, right wing nuts. Uh, the uh, extremist uh, uh, Islamists also believe that. Their God is so weak. Yeah, Allah is so weak. Uh, that's correct, yes. That they must do his work for him. Okay. You think it's more about power and and, and yeah, it's, and it's more about humans. That's what it's about. In other words, these uh, uh, sick humans, dictators, totalitarian uh, dictators are are so drunk with power <laughs> that uh, they're using uh, uh, religion as a front. That's correct. As a front, they like, use um, God as a a puppet, a front for their evil. Their evil that they perpetrate. Yeah. Now, um, okay. I don't know if I mentioned it last week. I, I, I think I mentioned it Sunday. But, you know, you know people how 
um, the, the Castro, you know, uh, uh, Fidel Castro and his sons, you know, they, when they speak and they and give his speech. his brother Raul. Raul, they give speeches uh, about uh, uh, touting um, and, uh, uh, ca uh, communism and, and bashing uh, capitalism and the uh, United States and everything. You know, I mean, it sounds all good. There's a lot of things they say that are true. But did you also know that um, they have been uh, using capitalism by by uh, price gouging and ripping off all the European tourists and Canadian tourists that have been going to Cuba and staying at their resorts, okay? And the cigars, they've been ripping people off with the, uh, the price of each Cuban cigar and everything. So they, so they hate capitalism so much, oh, yes. but they're sure using it to rip off the tourists. As do the red Chinese communists. Which means they are Which not, we trade with. Right. Which and means, give them all of our money buying their shit. Their tainted shit. Yeah. No quality control. Oh, by the way, the Chinese are now mixing plastic rice in with their... Oh, how sweet. With their regular rice. Nice. So, so these uh, socialists or communists are really... Yeah, don't, word, don't use the word socialist. Socialist is a good word. All right, these communists, so-called communists, are really uh, totalitarian... Capitalists. Uh, uh, ...dictators using capitalism mm -hmm. to their to their own benefit yeah. when they choose. Yeah. They embrace capitalism when they can rip people off, mm -hmm. but then they claim that they're communists, yeah. but yeah. they're not really communists either. That is correct. They're totalitarian that dictators. Is that is correct. So they, they pick it, they do what Republicans do. They pick and choose, they cherry pick what they want to use, cherry pick from the Bible, and of course, uh, Republicans and, and a lot of other people never use the synonym, the other word I like for socialism. On my hot, hot cereal, cinnamon. The other word for socialism is utopia. Not a bad word, is it? That's a pretty freaking awesome. Word. Ah, yeah. But when uh, they when people speak of it's like socialism, a -la, you know? they speak of totalitarianism, which has nothing to do with socialism. No, it's it's a fake socialism. Uh, okay. uh, the Soviet Union was uh, a totalitarian. Sta uh, from Stalin. That's correct. Maybe even from Lenin. All of them. <clears throat> I told you the first four years. From uh, I believe 1917 yeah. to 21, I mean, as they were getting their feet wet, were the only fairly decent years before they became totalitarian. You know, even even though Soviet Union. Hey, I mean, um, Vladimir Putin, even though he's successfully kicking ISIS ass asses. He, uh, he won't let anybody run against him politically. So that's totalitarianism, isn't it? Of course. <laughs> Kasparov ran against him. He ain't getting nowhere. Got nowhere. There's your world chess champion. He ain't getting nowhere. So the Mr. Against the KGB against man. Against the KGB man, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, it's all rigged. Yeah, look, it's human. It seems like... It's international. This 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 corruption. It's human nature. Is what we're talking about. Bingo. Therein lies the problem. Bingo. Always. Yeah. Nothing is new under the sun. Huh? Is human nature doesn't change. Yeah. Now let us sink our teeth into these readings. Oh, speaking of human nature. But yeah. I, all right. The conch. I already mentioned the conchs. Human nature won't get any bells. I was gonna. No, well, let me let me sound off on uh, us sinking our teeth into these readings. Seven bells, uh, plus Ooh, excuse me, our monologue that w wasn't too long-winded, was it? Eh, nah, not that bad. <clears throat> once again, once again, 
The United States economic growth disappoints with a 0.7% increase in the gross domestic product for the fourth quarter of 2015. Okay. This closes out another dismal year of economic growth totaling 2.4%. For the record, this follows annual growth rates of 2.4, 1.5, 2.2, 1.6, and 2.5% dating back to 2010. See the pattern? Since the end of the recession, we have yet to achieve a full year of 3% real growth. Pathetic. Hmm. President Obama is the first post-war II president to fail to achieve even a single year of 3% growth. This overwhelming economic record reflects Obama's terrible economic policies. I thought President Barack Obama is the, is the, uh, the lowest taxpayer money spender of... No, we're talking about economic growth. Economic growth. Yeah. No. We can't reach 3% anymore. That's the economy will not support it. it. Has nothing to do with Obama. No, you can blame the Republicans in Congress for helping that along. Well, yeah, you can blame buying all the crap from China. Yes, unemployment has substantially declined. And 2.65 million new jobs were created in 2015. One of the few bright spots in an otherwise lackluster economy. But remember, the labor force participation rate, the proportion of the labor force actually working or looking for work has declined yeah. to 62.6%. .6%. If the labor force participation rate were at the 65.7% rate, when President Obama took office, the unemployment rate would be more like 9%. Mm -hmm. The irony is that the working poor and middle-class families, whom Obama claims to be his main economic constituency, are the ones struggling the most in the Obama era. Two questions. How is it that hope and change working? How is that yeah. hope and change working? Do you really think it would be better under another anti-business progressive president? Yes, it will be much better under this one that's running. Well, I'd like to know where he's anti-business, first of all. He's not anti-business. I'm the one that's really anti-business. But yeah. no, he's um, democratic socialism. I, you know, it's we're like we're talking about Obama. Oh, we're talking about Obama. Oh, no, the statement the guy made about do you think another yeah, that would progressive is gonna make it, but that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But Obama is not an anti-business president. Hell no. Yeah. No, he's he's a he's a moderate uh, f f corporatist. That's correct. Like the the Hillary and the Billary. I get it. Bernie Sanders is the cool candidate. Cool, he's on fire too. Hillary Clinton is the nerd. She's a corrupt witch. Perceptions matter. Yeah, to to jackasses. But they should not trump substantive debate. Sanders with hair askew, lots of vim and vigor, and facts, and touting an economic revolution is the darling of the younger. This voters. guy, I don't like his tone of voice. He's going to get clocked by me. Who is this guy? If he continues in his vein. He is going to be like a Mr. James 
P. Madonna. Who, this guy? Who? Going to be Bernie? talking about whether your hair is combed or the content. Well, the I, hair is combed is more important. Well, I got my head buzzed the other day, and I don't have to worry about combing or brushing it. So there. I have been and continue to be a big supporter of Sanders and believe he should remain in the U.S. Senate. This guy, this this rascal, I bet he voted for Chris Christie. I do not believe he could be an effective president. Oh, really? This guy doesn't want to change things. He don't want to change business as usual. Yeah, nobody, no, none of those people do. He's afraid of change. That's He's right. something about the grassroots revolution that frightens these... Uh, let me tell. Let me guess. This guy's an older uh, uh, gentleman. How the hell do we know what he is? Usually, and old. it's a woman. Oh, that bitch, Joanne. You know, there's nothing more nauseating than a right-wing female. Usually, females they well, grab they gravitate to the left. She's not a right-wing female. She is a Democrat. She's a bitch, man. She's a what? And if you wait till the next sentence, you'll see why. Clinton is the smartest in the class. I want to knock her out, man. She's a feminist, too. Reserved and contemplative. And when she raises her hand, she always has the correct answer. Oh, really? Not shabby qualities for the Oval Office. I Her abilities to handle the job are really not the issue. <sighs> Rather, it is all about likability and trustworthiness. You know what? Nice clothesline to the throat. It seems to me Democrats this do. narrative began during the 1992 campaign when Clinton responded to a reporter with the following, quote, I suppose I could have stayed home and baked cookies and had tea. But what I decided to do was to fulfill my profession, which I entered before my husband was in public life. Yeah, taking, taking bribes is your profession. This thinking clearly did not fit the first lady mold and did not play well in the male dominated media. The status quo was suddenly shattered, but the glass ceiling was not. Thus, the legend of a calculated and ambitious shrew was born. Whether you support Clinton, Sanders, or anyone on the other side, I hope your vote will be based on facts rather than fiction. Shrew. Shrew is what she is, Hillary Clinton. Shrew. Hold on. And all you blue dog dummy crats that are pro, that are pro, ha, uh, fun. Hold on. The levity bells must, must chime. Dummy crats, blue dogs. You should be on the receiving end of my blackthorn shillelagh. Crack, just like I was opening up a lobster tail. And followed by a pile drive to a table. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, who cares about uh, his combing his hair, by the way? Unless the wind blows it. And Ted Cruz. Oh, God. Cast aside any veneer of kindness. The the needle nose on Wednesday. To trade insults and accusations in a show that demonstrated the stakes for both in the New Hampshire primary on Tuesday. Oh, by the way, remember tonight is another Republican debate. Oh, I yeah. believe on. Fox News. 
Trank, uh, Rand Paul dropped out, I heard, and, and, San Santorum. and Sanitarium, Santorum dropped and out. Cases. Oh, Cases dropped out? I believe so. You know, I hate to say it, but he seemed like, the, him and Rand Paul seemed like the smartest of all of them. I that mean, may be true. <laughs> Uh, you know, and uh, oh, Carly Fiorina took a tantrum. That uh, yeah, but she's still at the kid. She's still at the kids' table. But they won't. No, they won't give her any airtime. She. That's what. Good. Kick her the hell out. That's why she's pissed. No she, shit. She's. She. She's not. She's another. Uh, 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 egomaniacal shrew. That doesn't know when to quit. Ugliest woman, go. man. There you go. She doesn't know when to give up. The billionaire charged Cruz with fraud <laughs> and called for a do-over of the Iowa caucuses. That's what Bernie should have insisted on, but he, he felt he wouldn't have gained that many more delegates. delegates. But anyway. That's where Cruz's unexpected victory exposed weaknesses in Trump's unorthodox, personality-driven wow. bid for the White House. Cruz shot back with his fierceness attack yet on the man who has dominated opinion polls in New Hampshire suggesting the reality star doesn't like the reality of losing. Well, he's usually very wealthy people don't like the reality of hearing no and losing. He is having a temper tantrum. He, yeah, yeah. That's, well, rich kids do that. They have tantrums. Cruz declared he's losing it. Cruz is a lunatic. Trump appeared to take the loss graciously Monday night, but by Wednesday he had turned. Ted Cruz didn't win Iowa, he stole it. Are you serious? You, you piece of shit? You opened the door by yourself? Yeah, it wasn't closed properly. <laughs> Oh my God! You know, I'm not surprised that Donald Trump. Hey, I'm not surprised that Donald Trump is freaking out because Donald Trump. Actually, I'm kind of surprised myself that Ted Cruz edged out Trump. Not me. It was expected. Yeah, but 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 the but, evangelicals vote. Ah, uh, now I get. Oh, now I got. I got good reason to bash evangelicals. What could be in Santorum one? Wait a minute. Back when? Oh, okay. But now they're not relevant in in this campaign anymore, right? No, but that's what. The, that's what go. That's what they vote on in Iowa. Now, isn't it evangelical vote? Now, isn't it something that Ted Cruz? Uh. Uh. uh Last is lasting longer in the campaign than Rand Paul, a lunatic who may very well be technically a Canadian citizen, but a lunatic just the same, a religious zealot, yeah. edges edges out Rand Paul, who is a level-headed, intelligent. I think they're from Bowling Green, uh, uh, Ohio. Oh, I'm Kentucky. sorry. No, no, they're from Kentucky. I'm sorry. He's a libertarian. Yeah, Rand ran is and is a Dr. Ron Paul, yeah. who actually uh, are not that much different than a Republican. You know, they they want to let On you. On social issues, they are. They want to let you die. You know, they don't believe in uh, social uh, assistance, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, because they have theirs. You know. But, you know, but the whole idea of a zealot, religious uh, freak, uh, a cultist, surpassing Rand Paul is amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Ted Cruz, oh, 
the accused crews of dirty tricks in telling Ben Carson's supporters their man was dropping out and that they should turn to him. Before Trump's tweets, Cruz spokesman Rick Tyler told CNN the senator had apologized to Carson, though Tyler said the Cruz team, as a campaign, never claimed Carson was dropping out. Cruz offered no apologies. Instead, he said his two young daughters were better behaved than Trump. It's time to take out the infamous evangelical serpent, as in taking up serpents. Let me put it on, because I'm going to be, I'm going to be really bashing evangelicals, because of Ted Cruz. I don't know anyone who would be more comfortable with someone who behaves this way, having his finger on the button. We are liable to wake up one morning and Donald, if he were president, would have nuked Denmark. Nuked Denmark? Denmark is, I think, the most successful of all the Scandinavian um, countries. Norway, too. Norway? Norway, Denmark. Well, they're all great. Oh, but they hate Sweden. Why is that? They hate Sweden. They think it. Uh, the rest are socialists, but Sweden is a communist. Uh, Jump in Germany, I like them all. They're all great. All of Northern Europe <laughs> is doing it right. Germany... And they got the money to do it! You know, Germany has become quite the progressive country. For now. Their, their, their objective is to become totally, totally green by... Um, a certain date and, 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 and totally um, um, not dependent on fossil fuels at all com completely and they have and their scientists are still one of the finest in the world you know what I mean and there's a lot of progressive uh, programs and benefits in Germany well to you everything is for now because you you got the uh, the great tribu you got the great tribulation in your in your mind that things can't be hunky dory and peachy keen uh, uh, and happily ever after for long. Well, if you want to override God, certainly. So so. But if you can't override prophecy, so of God, what are you going to uh, do? So us us progressives, uh, we're going to end up suffering anyway. Absolutely. That's not nice. Well, that's the way it is. There's only a certain amount that are going to be taken to a safe area. Yep, yep. The, the, the problem is not in what is going to happen. The problem is when? in in Christianity and people in most religions who believe that God is going to save everyone. That's the problem. Oh, the, uh, the born-again uh, rapture. They're, uh, look, this serpent is symbolic of the fact that all all of organized re religion all of organized religion has became has become cults they all have become cults you know anytime they have uh, they go by their own rules and laws of their church and they they tweak and change and rewrite the bible you have all these new fangled modern versions of the Bible. Yeah, but if you don't believe in the God, then you can do anything. Yeah, like so, um, uh, Republicans seem to be stuck in the Old Testament because they like Oh, the, they're not stuck. They're stuck in the New. They use the Old only when uh, they are against something. They want to punish And it you. happens to be in the Old Testament. Well, they, they like That's the part all. of stoning certain people. Yeah. The, and women are second-class citizens yeah. or third-class citizens. they don't like the part about Jesus saying, love your enemies, do good unto those who hate you, What about the, turn the other cheek. What about the, they he, don't like that. the he who is without sin may cast the first stone? That too, they don't like that stuff. That's 
okay. New Testament. You know. Yes, but they like Testament. the they like the punishment part. Yeah. Of the Old Testament. Yeah. Except when it pertains to them. Okay. Cherry pickers. Yeah. The yeah. ultimate in vanity and selfishness yeah. is the Republican Party. You know what I mean? A judge on Wednesday refused to throw out the sexual assault case against Bill Cosby. Really? Sweeping aside a former district attorney's claim that he granted the comedian immunity from prosecution ten years ago. In another setback for the defense, common pleas judge Stephen O'Neill also denied a request nope, nope. Nope. to disqualify nope. newly elected district attorney Kevin Steele right. from the case. Cosby's lawyers had accused Steele of making a political football out of Cosby during the campaign. Cosby, 78, was arrested in December and charged with drugging and violating former Temple University Athletic Department employee Andrea Constant. at his suburban Philadelphia home in 2004. Yeah, he's from Philly. The TV star could get up to 10 years in prison if convicted. A preliminary hearing will be held on March the 8th to determine if prosecutors have enough evidence to put him on trial. Well, he's been, he's been wearing Teflon clothes so far. In 2005, the district attorney at the time, Bruce Castor, decided the case against Cosby was too flawed to prosecute. But Castor's successors reopened the investigation last year after Cosby's lurid uh. decade-old testimony from Constant's civil suit was unsealed. And dozens of other women came forward with similar accusations. Yeah, I never found him to be funny. You know, funny faces, funny sounds he makes. Like Jerry Lewis, I, I never found him to be funny either. Cosby's lawyers tried to get the case thrown out with help from Castor, who testified that he intended to forever close the door on prosecuting the comedian. Right. The alleged immunity agreement was never written down or filed in court. Yeah. Cosby's lawyers said they never would have let him testify in the civil case if they had thought he could still be prosecuted. Right. Lunch. We're going to cut for lunch. Uh, you will be joined now by our commercial voiceover artist. Uh, William Hamilton Morrow III with a promo as well as the words of wisdom of the um, um, How to Defeat a Conservative uh, Bible Verses. And we will be back with the balance of our show. The, evan Bible. the Evangelical Serpent. The balance, the balance right.
truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for your words of wisdom and promo. And by the way, with the uh, How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses, all you have to do is hit the pause button and take your time reading them. And you can always go back. That's the beauty of a pre-recorded show on the Internet. You can always go back. You can always hit the pause button. Now, what I want to start off with is that lovely question that was asked Hillary Clinton this week during the uh, Democratic debate about will you uh, 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 supply us or whoever with all of the transcripts from your your paid speeches, not just Wall Street, but all of them, and she did like a Ralph Cramden, a hum, a hum, a hum, a hum, a hum. I I have to look into that, which means don't hold your breath. Yeah, because if she's going to give a speech to uh, Goldman Sachs. All the stuff she's going to say is going to be positive for Goldman Sachs. Corporate statements. Yeah. She's not oh, going to she go. wouldn't like that stuff going out. She, she's not going to, you know, and her excuse for taking such an astronomical fee is, hey, they offered it to me. Exactly. So he'll have both, so both hands are wide open and both arms, both arms are wide open with Hillary Clinton. That's why they made a hundred million dollars last year. They they are not shy when it comes to uh, taking money. Shut up money. Taking money. And do the job for me. Now, um, she could have said yes, she could have said no. Uh, but looking into it is is, is kicking most a can likely, down the road. Most likely a no. Okay. Cause that would that would really expose her big time, right? You know why? Those who are supporting her would still support her. Well, okay. Yeah, the 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 feminists that have a very selfish agenda will still support Hillary Clinton. Um, in my opinion, they should be burnt to the stake. Ah! They are witches, also stupid witches. Um. Hillary, um, I'm sure Hillary did not make speeches about the good of the country and helping the middle class and the poor. I, I'm sure they were all pro-corporate speeches. And she, uh, I would take a wild guess and say that Hillary Clinton did not sound at all uh, a progressive liberal during any of these speeches. She probably sounded much like a Republican, since they're paying her so much money. He was a few hundred grand. I believe it was uh, 
Two hundred grand a, a speech. I think she made three of them. So that's not bad uh, day's work. It's not chump change. That's not chump change, baby. Yeah. So but anyway, I just wanted. To of course, our hubby makes a little more than that. I think. And then she says, well, other people uh, that make uh, get paid a lot of money for speeches. Yeah. They, they get paid a lot of money for speeches to... Um, but good people are not supposed to do what the world does. They're supposed to come out of the world, as the Bible says to Christians. Come out of the world. Well, if, if, <clears throat> if, the, if the top 1% is paying you that much money to to give speeches um, I can guarantee that the good of the country as a whole all inclusively is not part of that speech yeah, that's, great. that's all I'm, they I'm, are bribes as, as, as simple <laughs> as that, that, that is they are bribes yeah okay you know but hey every time uh, Hillary said something about a woman in the White House, or any time Hillary said something, you had that high-pitched cheering in the background. Those were girls. They weren't guys. They were high-pitched, screaming at the top of their lungs. So She wants to make history. They just want to make history. They, uh, they made the Democratic Party, uh, the political correctness of the Democratic Party was happy when Barack Obama became the first African American president and now they want to make history again with Hillary. Yeah, yeah. Not even caring about what happens to the United States, what happens to the poor, what happens to the homeless, the middle class, the environment. Not even caring. Uh, oh, by the way, California's aquifers are contaminated by fracking water. Frack water. Gee, Jerry Brown, what happened to the uh, moonbeam? What happened to the uh, progressive liberal moonbeam, Jerry Brown? I guess he's not the progressive moonbeam anymore. I guess Jerry Brown had his price. Governor of California, shame on you. You're also inducted into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Fracking water has contaminated whatever little water they have. And the rest, Jerry gave it away to Peter Braybeck of Nestle's, who believes that we have no right to drinking water. No. Absolutely not. No right. For, no rights at all. For hundreds of millions of years, creatures have enjoyed pure drinking water until Peter Brabeck now comes along and says no. Peter Brabeck totally... Can uh, you imagine uh, Peter Brabeck going out there with a rope uh, and surrounding a water hole? For elephants, bo 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 rhinos, and all this shit, and 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 saying no more. Once this is my private property. One sip, and you have to leave. No sip. You pay. That's what he's. That's what he means in his statement. Of course, if you can't make a buck on it, what the hell good is capitalism? Yeah. Now Chris. You gotta make a buck. Now on Chris Christie feels. You got to make a buck, buck on water, also. That's right. Trying to make a buck on the lottery. Um, privatized. Hey, everything privatized. Now right? Peter Brabeck reminds me of the uh, Twilight Zone episode when the, the the German guy and the other guy had all these bars of stolen gold, and they were walking in the desert. And, 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 and slowly but surely water became more valuable than the gold bars and the German guy who who was ha carrying the gold that it was really his gold he had a he had to pay the other guy for a sip of water from his canteen and then and then the the price of water went up two bars for one sip three bars for 
half a sip or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Then eventually he hit the guy in the back of the head with the last uh, gold bar. But they both died in the desert. Yes. But, but, the, but. the point is... <laughs> the point is <laughs> that they robbed whatever they robbed to get the gold. And then they stashed it with themselves for several years. Then they came out. They went to suspend an animation. Yes. And then they came out and expected no one would be looking for them, et cetera, et cetera. But in the end, he found out that gold wasn't worth anything. Cause until it the, was easily made. It was easily manufactured, yeah. yeah. In the future. In the future. Absolutely. Like with those uh, that couple that was buzzing along in their little George <laughs> Jetson uh, vehicle, you know, and they were both found dead. And is it for nothing? Gold. It's all for nothing. Gold. You know that used to be worth something hey. many years ago, until they found out how to make it. Same thing with Star uh, Star Trek with the uh, the machine that made the food and the coffee and the tea and and and, and gold. The, mo the molecules. Yeah, it made anything you wanted. Yeah. So money was. <laughs> Yet the Ferengi, they come up with the Ferengi, and the Ferengi were into interested in latinum, money, and etc. I didn't know how they ever put that together with the Star know. Trek. You know, um, in in reality, the diamond is not a precious stone anymore. I know I said it before. You know, there's so many uh, diamonds in the rough <laughs> being mined in South Africa by the De Beers Mining Company that they control the exportation of the diamonds just to keep the price up. It's not yeah, a precious supply, stone. Supply and demand. Yeah, and, and, and you know a cubic zirconia <coughs> which costs next to nothing is is just as beautiful and, and perfect as the most perfect stone diamond. Not to that engaged woman my friend. You mean the woman that wants you to go to Jared? That's right. She wants you to download five grand on it. On that stone. You mean like K Jewelers, Jared, uh, where you have to pay several grand just to make her happy on a stone that's really not precious. It's not an investment anymore, but but the uh, the sleazy American retail industry Possibly the the Zionists that are in, are in control of it. Easy. They 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 um, could be anything. They want uh, they they screw you by their advertisements, making the diamond much more important than it really is. A diamond shows how much you love her. A diamond a diamond is forever. Now that. The St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets. Uh oh, it's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming what up. What is it? The February fourteenth. Yeah. St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets is pretty accurate. I'm so sick of the commercial. I think it's um, one of the major jewelry companies is is promoting a Levion's chocolate diamonds. Chocolate, my ass. They're brown diamonds. Maybe that's poo poo. Maybe they're they're made uh, brownish in the lab. Uh, chocolate diamonds, you know, just to sell it, you know. But but the the whole concept of the diamond is 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 to a total fraud. Right. You in order for you to possess a an investment grade diamond you have to have a certificate of authenticity that that diamond was graded by professionals and deemed uh practically flawless or really? flawless to have investment value and even then if de beers decided to export all of them and drove the price down you you would have been ripped off by the many thousands of dollars that you paid, and all these suckers, all these men that are in debt, that have to uh, they use their credit card and have to pay off that diamond, and um, 
and then if the relationship doesn't work out and the mm. woman is scorned or disgruntled she mm. may not want to give it back <gasps> then you have to take her to small claims court because the, the engagement ring is not like an ordinary gift it's not a, a, a Rolex watch it is a, a it is representative of an, an engagement for marriage a promise for contract. marriage contract right it's like it's an engagement ring yeah. but uh, if the woman's pissed off huh. you know she wants to get even and but anyway the whole thing is a scam the whole American fine jewelry scam mm -hmm. and um, just like Hillary uh, fraudulently represented herself during the Democratic uh, debate Okay, well, we'll see, we'll see a lot of frauds tonight, too. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. All right. I'm sorry, I was long-winded. The Republicans winded. will be. I was long-winded. Yes, I was long-winded. The U.S. Constitution contains three separate sections regarding the three separate branches of the federal government. Legislative, executive, and judicial. These three branches were intended to be equal. However, the public's attention and the media focus on the presidency and the various upcoming presidential primary elections have created an appearance of unequal branches with the presidency being the preeminent branch and the other two branches being secondary. The media start following the presidential race almost two years before the election with non-stop coverage of who is and who will be running. The race has almost become a celebrity contest to anoint a king or queen. Even more reserved journalism outlets such as PBS take part in this celebrity watching. Meanwhile, the inhabitants and proceedings of what should be an equally important branch of the federal government, the legislature, receives very little attention from the media and the public. Perhaps the United States should enact the rule limiting the presidential election contest to 10 weeks before the election similar to what Great Britain and Canada have done with their contests for Prime Minister. Okay. How anybody could consider voting for Ted Cruz <laughs> simply astounds me. <laughs> In my opinion, somebody who has seen fit to shut down the federal government is not fit for the presidency. Yeah, well, well, well what, a, what about the fact that he's, he's a stark, raving, mad, religious nut? Senator Cruz, Republican of Texas, was behind the 16-day government shutdown in 2013 in a futile bid to defund Obamacare. And just a few months ago, he was at it again, threatening to shut down the federal government over funding for Planned Parenthood. Oh yeah, they, they, they believe the fertilized human egg is a, is a baby. How absurd. Government shutdowns are simply unacceptable as a means of political strategy and are akin to a little boy taking his bat and ball and going home when he does not get his way. Wow, Ted Cruz uh, during the last debate threatened to uh, walk out of the studio if, if, uh, if he continued to receive uh, quote, quote unquote mean questions from the uh, commentators. The ability to compromise is what governing is all about. 
And Cruz, quite clearly, does not possess that ability. Mm. Cruz is unfit for public office of any kind. Any kind. Let alone president not of even, the United States. Not even dog catcher. And as a little uh, off the scene here, mm -hmm. is it really necessary to have a new Barbie? They actually have an article about Barbie? With seven skin tones? How politically correct are they getting, my God? Four body types? No, no, Barbie is physically fit and slim. No, 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 this is bullshit. Trying to, trying to, uh, uh, um, trying to make the obese women feel good about themselves. They, they, they should be ashamed of themselves. They should be exercising and eating properly. 30 hair color colors? Yeah, this is political correct as bullshit. And 22 eye colors? Insane. As a child growing up in the late 60s and 70s, I had every Barbie doll outfit and accessory. Barbie is Barbie. She is a young Caucasian a blonde with blue eyes and a model's body, period. However, period. she is not genetically accurate. Oh, I, no, I've seen, I've seen people like her. I've seen she models. She has no breasts or pussy. No breasts? And no pussy. She's flat chested? Yes. Seriously? Yeah, as far as I know. Oh, like a, like a high fashion model where they want to like they want like Twiggy, they want like um, you know the, you know the ones that that do the catwalk for high fashion. Yeah, they they tend know, to be a doll is a doll, you know. It's just, a doll. They just, just don't want to you know, make it uh, humanly accurate. Yeah. Anyway, she had shoes and dune buggies, little kitty dolls, and the like. My grandfather was a carpenter, and he built a Barbie dollhouse to scale for them to live in, furniture and all. Holy shit. So it may surprise some people that while I developed an eating disorder from the age of age 14, which I still struggle with, not once was I asked during any therapy or residential treatment by, for my relationship with Barbie and how I felt about her body. How I felt about her body. It's a doll. It's made out of plastic, you moron. With nylon hair. In fact, <laughs> I feel secure in the knowledge that Barbie oh, gosh. had very little to do with my body dysmorphia oh. or lack of self-confidence. To be insecure because of a fake plastic little doll. Still, yeah. I wonder if we are going to have a mom who leaves her kids at home with the nanny so she can pursue her career, Barbie, and a breast implant Botox Barbie. <laughs> we don't want to leave anyone out of this politically correct collection, really. <laughs> Let's get over ourselves. With all the, you know what this is? This is a big distraction of the American public to what's really going on in this country, to what is really important. Kind of like what News 12 New Jersey does. They try to distract you with trivial nonsense that they keep on repeating. Oh, yeah, and oh. I get the feeling they like Chris Christie. Oh, yeah? Every time they talk about him, they're all smiling from ear to ear. Oh, they never, know. ever mention anything about any Democrat. But anyway. New research published on Monday in the Journal of Internal Medicine confirms what many people have suspected for some time. If you smoke a lot of weed, like it or not, 
It may permanently damage your short-term memory. Well, your your doesn't doesn't. Um, I mean, aside from medical marijuana or mar marijuana extracts for medical purposes, um, um, and all the wonderful things that come from growing hemp, doesn't smoking anything contain tars? Forget about nicotine, tars. I think the tars are the, are, are what's carcinogenic. Isn't that similar to acrylamides on, on a and a, on a over barbecued meat uh, a hamburger that's all black on the outside? Yeah. You burn something. You're burning something up. It's going in your lungs as smoke. There's got to be tars from from pot smoking. Professor Reto Auer of the University of Lausanne led a team of researchers who examined data on the marijuana habits of 3,400 Americans over 25 years. At the end of the study period, the subjects took a battery of tests designed to assess cognitive ability. I wonder if it helps to use uh, the water filtration of the bong, you know, where the, the smoke goes through the water. The hookah, I'm sorry, the hookah, yeah, the bong, the hookah. The hookah. Well, that's what the e-cigarette is nowadays. Is yeah. water in there? You're smoking moisture. That's not, you know, not smoke. There's no flavoring that you put in it, or? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. The study found that people who smoke marijuana on a daily basis for a long period of time, five years or more, had poor verbal memory in middle age than people who did not smoke marijuana. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I require pure air. Um, I don't like fumes. I don't like odors. Uh, I wonder if anyone I know has purchased the Auric air purifier. It's supposed to be really good. You know. Oh, you know what's an air purifier that's really excellent? It, it's actually a, uh, um, an, a an ion <coughs> positive. Ionizer positive versus negative ion air purifier is they have this this product it's a lamp it's a it's solid Himalayan pink salt oh. lamp with solidified Himalayan pink salt and you put a low watt bulb inside and it's very pretty aesthetically you know when you light it up and it's supposed to give off um, I think it's the positive ions that 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 cause all the uh, particles in the air, everything, to fall to the floor, to come out of the air and fall to the floor. And also, for you asthmatics, there is, uh, from what I understand, the Himalayan pink salt is excellent therapy. As an inhaler, yes. As an inhaler, for I get, I suppose you uh, I have you mix the salt. Right here. You, no, you just put the salt in the container. And then hot water. Shake it. Breathe it in. Hot water or just no water. I said put the salt in a shake. Is, is that like putting the lime in the coconut? That's correct. And shake it all around. You put, and put the, the salt lime in, in the, the shaker and, and you tea. shake it all up. <laughs> Hold on, where's and my any of the small, and, 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 and as you're using... Wait a minute, you're trying to tell me that the only thing you, you, that goes in the inhaler is the salt? No water? No vapors from hot boiling water? That's amazing. Just the salt. Just the salt. I'll be damned. And you breathe it in. I had no idea. Through your mouth. With the lime and it opens up open. your your uh, 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 you know uh, 
the uh, tubers. Bron the bronchial tubes. The bronchial tubal. I didn't know it was that simple. That simple. Because I, I have plenty of Himalayan pink salt at home. And then the next time you use it, you shake it. And all the little salts that have been used up, they drop out of the container. How do they and drop out? And maybe that? after a month or so, you have to put more salt in. How do they drop out? They are rock salt. They're not little salts. Oh, you They are like a, a, a 14 karat diamond. Oh, you're talking about similar to the coarse the coarse salt yeah. that you put Kosher. in a in a grinder like a pepper mill oh I could I could buy those it's coarse salt and as you before you inhale it you shake it now let me ask you a question and that shakes out the small ones that are being used up does it can uh, can coarse Sea salt be used, or does it? Or they yeah, yeah, they anything. recommend the pink Himalayan. You can't use Morton salt because that'll fall right out the holes. No, you <laughs> it has to be the crystalline, the the uh -huh. they call it coarse yeah. salt, which yeah. are which is used in um, in pepper mills. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I learned something. I learned something new. You see, here I'm assuming. That you you get the tea kettle and you're pouring hot water mm -hmm. in and you're smelling the vapors, you're breathing the vapors in, but no, it's actually easier than that. Can you get a cold if you're not around other people or anything a sick person may have touched? My friends say you can. Are they correct? Nope. Well, Although cold viruses can survive for a while, after a sneeze or a cough, they do not live independently in the air. Oh, no? Either indoors or outdoors. The rhinovirus. They're transmitted by touch, right? From somebody schnazola. Well... Through maybe a sneeze if or somebody, a cough. If somebody has a bad cold or cough and they... they stroke their nose and cough into their hand and then shake your hand ah yes and then your hand does the same thing oh it's infected uh, for uh, a time uh, yes well then you're getting a bad cold and then you touch your eyes or your schnoz yes and the lime don't go in no coconut either man you you go right to coldsville so daddy -o. you can take a long Solitary hike in the freezing rain, return home to alternatively heat and chill yourself by jumping in and out of your backyard hot tub. Rain turns to snow. And not get sick. And you can still be sure that you will not catch a cold. Interesting. So the rhinovirus. However, if it lowers your immune system. Which the cold does. Which the then cold, then it makes you more susceptible because your immune system is not able to effectively fight off any foreign invaders in your body. Now, so what you're saying is the 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 uh, viruses, particularly the cold virus, but I'm sure other viruses uh, are sort of like parasites. They jump from person to person. They do, get into your cells. They do their thing. Then they do their thing. And some viruses actually can hide in, like, the spinal cord, right? Like the uh, herpes simplex. Um, herpes, in herpes uh, if you had chicken pox it's already in as there. a child, you have the herpes zoster virus already in you because it hides out in the nerves, in the nerve cells. It's a nervy little bastard. So, you know, just because they find a herpes virus in your body, that does not mean, and I want people to understand, because, you know, they, people might misconstrue, it does not mean you have the sexually transmitted herpes, because cold sores are herpes, um, shingles, which is herpes zoster, is a herpes, the shingles, that's what we're talking about. And um, I've had it, and it's extremely painful, man. It's like somebody sticking needles in your skin. It's like really, really painful. 
I mean, it's like excru excruciating. But anyway. Your immune system at that time must have been absolute shit. I must have been under a lot of stress. That's yes, great. I did have the chicken pox when I was a kid. Uh -huh. I had the measles, I had the mumps. The which, mumpy is, which is a real funny word for an illness, mump. Not very attractive, right? Mumps, mump. I know, I know a lot of mopes, but not mump. Anyway, I digress. But. Donald Trump's decision to skip last week's Republican debate. Foolish. It's just the latest behavior on his part that suggests that he, perhaps even subconsciously, does not really want to be president. He showed cowardice to, towards Megyn Kelly. Probably because he wouldn't be able to insult her in any way, shape, or form. Oh, he can't? Without backing, the, you know. What if she's attacking him? Well, you see what happened last time. Well, all he had to say was, uh, hey, I'm a, I'm a billionaire. Uh, women, chicks dig me, and I dig them. So, you know, I'm a billionaire, I'm Donald Trump, I'm famous. I can say pretty much what I want. And I, I think he wouldn't, you know, I think he would still retain his supporters. His behavior reminds me of the play and movie, The Producers, in which theatrical producers scheme to get rich by overselling interest in a Broadway flop. Complications arise when the show unexpectedly turns out to be successful. Well, I suggest that similar complications have arisen for Donald Trump, who seems to always raise the ante with ever more outrageous behavior. Unfortunately, complications may also be in the future for America, when a populace who was foolish enough to elect Barack Obama may demonstrate at least as much poor judgment by electing Trump. Woe for him and woe for us. Well, you know, I think Donald Trump's hair, his ridiculous hairstyle never changes for the same reason why Barbara Streisand refused to get a nose job. It's just, it's just like, like rebel, rebelliousness, rebellion. About Bob Ross. Rebellion, rebellion. He you was know, told to get a haircut, he never did it because it was his trademark. Oh, the, what, the white guy with the afro? Yeah, the paint, Bob Ross. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, really. What about the, the foolish, ingrate, the late, um, Cesar, uh, uh, actor Cesar, uh, Cesar Romero, who was told to shave his mustache off to play the Joker on Batman, and he won't do it. So they had to put the makeup over the mustache. You're getting a job, man. You're getting a steady job, you idiot. Uh, I can't, I can't yell at him because he's dead, but, you know. But that's it. We're done. Editorial page. Oh, you have one? Alf, editor Alfred P. Doblin writes a column puncturing the conservative mantra that all life is sacred. Oh gosh, I know where this is going. By illustrating case after case where the only lives some really consider sacred are the lives in the womb. Oh, so a sprouted grain a sprouted grain that could be a young plant is sacred. All life is sacred. Only oh. in the womb. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Not when they come out. Now you know this. Not when they come out, no. 
the baby, the fetus, the embryo, it's all sacred in the womb. But not when it comes out to the conservatives. Do, do they, 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 so they don't they, want to pay for it then. So what about the fertilized egg? Do they consider that sacred? Yes, that's when life begins to them. Oh, really? Conception. So life that, begins at conception. So that's a human life? That's correct. It's horseshit. That first cell produced by the spermatozoon and the ovum together, that is life, baby. My ass. It is no more life than a fertilized chicken egg in your omelet. And speaking of that, today I cracked two eggs to make an and omelet. got four yolks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You you actually got two you opened up two double yoked eggs? I wonder what the odds are of doing that. Usually that's kind of lucky, ain't it? I think I you, should have a lot of luck. I think you should be. You, you might be receiving a big windfall. Yes. Two double. February the twenty-sixth. And, and we're not yoking around either. This man should be in ecstasy. Exactly. You are. You are. Um, Eggs, extremely lucky. You are eggs, extremely lucky to get two double yolk eggs. And on the same day, it's got to be an omen, man. And the same day, Jabroni. Tribune News Service columnist Ann McFeeters wrote a column. Who needs environmental protections? <laughs> about poisons to our food, <laughs> air, water, that are the result of reckless behavior. And the only response by the Republican presidential candidates is a renewed attack on the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Remember what Bernie Sanders said? If it was a white suburban neighborhood that was where the water was poisoned, there would have been a totally different response. We all know this. By the federal government. The racism in America is not well hidden. It's always there. Just scratch the surface. Because this 2016 Republican campaign has brought it all out. Because of the nature of the candidates. They're not shy anymore about their feelings. On the same page, right? author Johan Hari wrote a column, Has Drug War Made Drugs Stronger? Positing that the conservatives' war on drugs has made things worse. I think many politicians are making money on the uh, drug trafficking. Maybe so. Hey, there's po a lot of poppies growing in Afghanistan. Why more than when we went in there? Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Yes. Washington Post columnist E.J. Dion wrote a column. The GOP goes rogue. <laughs> <clears throat> Again, on the same page. <clears throat> about the Republican Party giving in to the Tea Party. The record is preaching to the choir. The crazies have taken over. They sure have. Is it true that uh, Bernie Sanders has dissolved the double-digit Hillary Clinton league lead nationwide since the last Democratic well, debate you, this you week? You see what happened in Iowa. No. It man. was neck and neck. They couldn't find a winner. Yeah. And the, artic the articles, the articles, pretty much called it despicable. In other words, I mean the the coin toss 
Well, there should have been a better way of handling a draw, shouldn't there? What is it? What is this? A football game? Yeah. You got, you're going to decide the future of our country on a coin toss? And not only did it happen once, it happened on six of the ballots. Well, that's obviously uh, 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 Satan that that's making it come up head six times, right, for Hillary? Otherwise, I mean, luck used to be God, but not anymore. But even the, the 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 whole, I the whole idea of of using a coin. You mean to tell me they couldn't they couldn't find a few votes somewhere? One that, guy. That's that, all I needed. One guy. I mean, one guy to go to the other side. That's all. So the, the, I mean, even a recount could have came up with a couple of more votes on either side, but not. Not use a coin toss, you know. You you know, it's like rolling dice, playing uh, 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 Monopoly or backgammon or something. But You're rolling dice. Six heads in a row. Tell you that Miss, Miss Hillary Clinton must be a lucky person. Well, she's got the maybe that's why she ain't been caught. She's, yet. she's got the forces of the evil uh, keeping the truth about Hillary from the public. She's she's another uh, a, a corporatist wearing Teflon clothing. Nothing nothing has nothing sticks. Nothing has stuck yet. There's and, a new uh, non-stick thingy, titanium and something else. Well, titanium. No more Teflon. Teflon's old hat. No, that's old hat. Yeah, uh, that's uh, and also cool. Silverstone is old hat. Yeah. It's some kind of ceramic... Uh, That's it. Ceramic and titanium. Ceramic. You know, titanium is the strongest alloy known. Yeah, airplanes are made out of it. Right. And they're, it's lighter than steel. It's actually, yes, it's, it's actually a lightweight metal, but it's the strongest. Um, um, now, the strongest plastic is polypropylene. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with a company called Cold Steel. They make weapons, walking Ooh. sticks. This cord that I put on my shillelagh, because the original one was some cotton, some green cotton string, this is polypropylene. All right. I cauterized the end, <laughs> like Reverend, Reverend Bill here taught me. You know, if you have shoelaces that are too long, you cut them and then you cauterize them in the, in the flame. So I melted the knot. Now I got polypropylene, but it's supposed to be extremely powerful. I mean, a walking stick from cold steel can. Sh they show the man shattering a cinder, Aye. shattering a cinder block with the walking stick, which is 100% polypropylene. But anyway, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Progressive Discussions. Um, I guess. Um, what is the date today again? Uh, six. Sixth. Ah, oh, okay. So, um, so Valentine's Day would have been would have been passed when I when we do the next show, or seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen will be next show. Be so th Valentine's Day will be Sunday. Will be Sunday. Okay, Sunday. gotcha, gotcha. We're supposed to get. You know, people are all going, ooh, ah, we're going to get another snowstorm. Yes. We might, it might miss us. It might yes. go east. And it's only... But cold weather's coming. Again. Now, they said we're gonna, it's going to be a high of 39 and 40 on Wednesday or something. 39. Two days next week are going to be 30 high. Oh, boy. But, but not, not, not Monday, Tuesday. They said... No, for, no not, not this. They said 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Well... Uh, at this time of year, I think it's, it should be 40. Yeah. And at the end of the month, it's going to be like 42, 42. Right. Well, 30. Well, luckily, the snow that fell the other day yeah, it's all gone. was full of rain, it's water. All gone. I didn't. I didn't shovel not once because gone. I let nature do it for me. Yeah. I, I just didn't have to pay my guy to shovel. No, it. no, because it was wet. I watched it melt away. Yeah. We'll see you next time, jabronis. Yeah. We're gonna melt away too. Yeah. I'm Say, melting. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the Wicked Witch. That's Hillary. I'm melting, melting, melting. 
I am not the establishment. I am not the establishment. Oh, no. Yeah, you really feel our pain, Hillary, don't you? Uh -huh. The establishment. Oh, that turquoise, that new turquoise blue die-cast uh, auto on the far left looks really sharp. What kind of car is that again? Ford Galaxy. Ford Galaxy. Yeah. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.